Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth. Thanks for joining me on Coding Shorts. This time I want to talk about top-level statements in C Sharp. While they aren't a revolutionary feature, I think you're going to see a lot of use for them in using C Sharp to write small, minimal console applications. I've already used it to build a few of my own. In this episode, I'm going to go ahead and build a simple Visual Studio project cleaner using top-level statements in C Sharp. You might be thinking, why can't I just do this with scripts? like PowerShell or command scripts, or even bash shell scripts. You can. This isn't about replacing any of that. I just like it that sometimes it's easier for me as a longtime C Sharp developer to just kick out a quick EXE than worrying about building a lot of scripts where I'm less comfortable, to be honest. Let's get started. So let's build something simple to show us how top-level statements work. So I'm going to start this by just going .NET New, and I'm going to create a console app, and I'm going to give it the name of VS Cleaner, because I want to create a little tool that's just going to go through some directories and delete directories that I don't want to stay around. Bin, obj, node modules, those sorts of things. And I'm just going to tell it to put it in this directory instead of creating its own directory. And so we end up with a VS Proj. Looks exactly like you would think it would be. And then a quick program, right? This is the standard sort of program that you get from a console app. And if we make this a little larger, and if we call .NET run, of course, it's just going to compile this and then run it, right? Right to the world. Let's start by getting rid of everything but the using system, because we're going to probably need that. And I could put console.write line here, top level statements and run this and it'll do the same thing. It'll just run what's there. And this is a little bit of trickery, but what C-sharp is doing here is simply taking the contents of this top level statement and calling them from main. In fact, let's go ahead and include args.length, right? To prove that this args is an actual valid thing. It's gonna be a list of string arguments that are called because we're in sort of the context of a main here. And so if we run this again, we're going to say, see, there's no arguments, and let's add a number, and we'll see that it's going to return us three, right? All good so far. Let's get rid of this console right line, and let's just call it our VS Cleaner. And in fact, I'm going to be using right line a lot, so let's go ahead and use a static system.console, right? That just allows us to not have to use the word console and just use it as a raw thing. I'm going to be doing a, a number of them, so this is going to be what I want. And VS Cleaner is going to require a single parameter, and that's going to be a directory name. So I'm just going to check and say if args.length does not equal one, then let's just show a warning right line you must supply a directory name, right? Let's add another one and just show the example, which would be VS Cleaner, and then we'll return. So if there's not just one argument, we'll show them some help, right? We can go about our business now. And what we're gonna wanna do is call a recursive function that's gonna take some directory name and recursively go through it to try to find directory names that match something. And so let's first start by saying clean directories. Let's just call it that as a method we're going to call, and we're going to pass it in that first argument. And we can introduce this as a method, right? And so what's happening here? This is, in essence, going to be things that are all defined in sort of the main to be called. And then this can be a method that we can then access here. We don't need to define a whole class in order to just have some members here. In fact, we don't have to have a class to also have data. And so here I'll say var to be deleted, right? And I'll create a new array of strings and just say bin obj node modules, right? Those are the three that I'm going to want, at least as a beginning point, to be used as the deleted modules. Okay, that sounds good. And before we call this, let's just ensure that args0 in the new directory info for arg0, and let's bring that namespace in, and let's just make sure it exists. If it exists, we'll clean the directories. If it doesn't, we're just going to fall down through the end of this where we'll just say write line completed, right? No harm, no foul, because we need to assume that this clean directories actually works in the way we want to. So what are we going to do in clean directories? We're going to call this our dir name. Just going to be the full directory name. 
Let's just go ahead and get a list of the subdirectories from that. We'll just call this directories. We'll call directory dot get directories, right? And just pass it in that dir name. And we'll go through for each directory in directories. Most of this should just be standard C sharp, but let's make it something useful so you can see how this is actually being used. And so what do we want to do for each directory? We're going to first need a directory info for that. And so we're going to pass it in that directory name that it found. And if that to be deleted contains our info dot what name, right? Because we need the short name to compare it to these. Otherwise, we could just compare it to a directory, but that directory is going to be the full directory name. It says it doesn't contain a contains element, and so we're going to need to actually come over here and just say using system.link, because that's where the contains we want exists. And if it does contain our name, and let's go ahead and make sure that the name of the directory is going to be too lower, just to make sure we don't have any case sensitivity problems. Then we're going to write line deleting directory. Right? Put that dollar sign so the concatenation works. And then what do we do? Info.delete, right? And I'm going to say true so that it recursively deletes everything. After this, what can we do? We're just going to call clean directories. This is going to be for directories that aren't to be deleted. We're just going to pass in our directory name here. Cursively call down, go through all of them, and let's go. And so we can see we have some interesting ideas where we're just simplifying how we're building this. We still need using statements. We still need code here to be written. And we still need helper functions, even types. You could even have your own classes here that are then used by other things above this. As long as your types are after all the top level functions. So as long as your types, including methods, are after your top level statements, you're all good. And these are all the top level statements we're really talking about, right? And so I find this a better syntax to actually build this stuff. So let's try and see if this works, see if I've made any mistakes. I know some of you may be screaming if it doesn't work, but let's try it again. VS run. And of course, I will compile this into a single assembly at some point, but for now, this is good enough. And I'm just going to go to my working directory, which has some old projects, sort of one-off tests. So there should be some things to clean here. So let's try this now with, let's say, a test auth project I have. We can see that it deleted the bin and the object. It went about its day. And let's see what happens if we just do it in working. Let's see how much we can actually clean here. Notice it paused on node modules because that's a, going to tend to be in some of these a much larger. But we went ahead and created a really simple project here. Top level statements allowed me to do this without having to write PowerShell all in one file. You can compile it easily into a quick exe I can run, and our day is over. And you get out of this this little tool that may or may not be helpful for you. I'll include in the notes for this video a link to a gist that has this actual code in it. I'm not going to put it up on GitHub or anything since it's a little one filer, but you can grab this if you're interested in seeing how it works. And thanks for taking a look at how top level statements work. Until next time, this has been Sean Wildermuth in my code shorts. I am wearing shorts.